Welcome back guys to more Keita into Telefang. You're watching a video that was originally one and a half hour in length. So you can probably figure out why. Or how many things have been cut from it. Um We were supposed to return to Tolong Village to hear Moose's long, boring and unnecessary speech about supernatural e monsters. They safeguard the E-Monsters world and they're the first of their kind and that's really all that's even necessary to know. Well, aside from the human world invading the E-Monsters world, kind of what industry has been doing to the whole tribe thingy, back when people still lived in tribes or went bad cutler. Wait, who was that again? Some guy who killed off a bunch of Indians before they eventually killed him, but the Indians still died. So, all in all, what he says is really boring, unnecessary, blah blah blah. And yes, you heard right in the beginning when I said one and a half hour had been cut down to about 25 minutes. A lot of these battles are pretty much the same and then require absolutely no preparation or anything special, so I felt there were no reason to show them, even though some of them are mandatory. But getting back to where we're supposed to, it's a really short route, as you can pretty much see here. It's pretty much all about getting to Alice, then taking the right turn, and then going back up to that cave entrance. So you're back at the antimetry right here, and then you move through that. Now you need to go back to Pebbery Mountain, because what was originally blocked there is not blocked anymore. So that's why we have to hit there. So this of course means that all monsters you have gained throughout Pebbery Mountain is now available again. Not that they haven't been before, but they don't spend five or so turns returning to you. So that's basically the way it works. And like I've already said, none of these battles are any difficult or require any special preparation whatsoever. They kind of resemble what you've seen throughout Pebbery Mountain. Some of them, they feature mainly some Hazaraigar and Camillan is mostly there too, so... You pretty much build your strategy on that, but nothing else. Now I originally missed Duke what way I was supposed to go, but... Yeah, it kind of happens. There's also a small maze part which might get you stumped for quite a while. But thankfully it's not the worst to figure out. Not as difficult as in The Legend of Zelda, but it's a similar one to that too. Now I decided to keep some of the battles because this one actually stands out from the others. He has two Gansu, which is an evolved form of Buswaru. I believe it's Buswaru fused with a gun that gives this monster. Now what you want to know about those is that they have high attack and thus they can pose quite a threat to you. Of course if you're not taking care of them. But if you can get lucky with one of them charging its e-magic, it's pretty easy to get away. And yes, I reuse my Rasen and Raika strategy from before. Well, I do that with most of them. I use Scorpio here because... Well, I figured there might have been something about using it, but... Now I'm not so sure anymore. I just figured since Gensu had a lot of attack and Scorpio can usually survive quite well that it was basically the reason why I chose to do so. But you want to put, put all your focus on Gensu, since they're the most dangerous part of this. And that might have been the only time Bovati's Saber has ever hit anything. 
And well, Scorpio is super effective towards Bubadi. So that's another reason. So you get rid of that guy, heal up for a little bit. To about 80 or so. You can do it with less, but it depends on the encounter rate too. So by this point you will have perhaps 90 HP or so. I guess Basiria would be a good addition. It wasn't. It also denied all my orders. Fucking assholes. Viburnum is also something you will see in the upcoming dungeon. There's two of them I think that has three of them. And this is the mage part, you go west, south, north, and there you are. It's not the toughest, but it, it might get you stumped wondering, well, how much do I have to move or in what order and so on. And as far as I'm concerned, there's really no one explaining the route, or so I haven't found. But this place is important since this is where you want to grind a lot. So a few hours later I'm level 60 and Cryptoburn can get, in, can get his true Denju evolution. It's named Crypto Knight. That's the only reason why it's named, but also because of this asshole. Foundry decides to show up again, and this is the last time you have to fight him. But we will be seeing him one more time when he's absolutely pathetic. Though you don't have to fight him, he... you will still see him. Okay. You probably remember his anti from last time. A very annoying monster too. The basic thing of this is that you want to put your attention on Latias. Or perhaps you want to put it on Antiosi. Antiosi can basically use Flap and it works the same way as Dust if you watch part 10. Or the last part, which was part 10, whatever. Um, it is very weak defensive-wise, so it's quite quick to take out. But the dangerous thing about Largest is that it can deal a ton of damage against Crypto Knight if you're not careful. Riker is basically able to deal a lot of damage. But because I would have to wait two rounds, I didn't want to depend on getting too lucky with Largest and Antiosi. So, that's basically the reason why I chose what I did. Now, if Lajas does manage to pull off his attack on Crypto Knight, it deals a lot of damage, but it shouldn't be enough to kill you. Of course, it depends on how much HP you have at the time. But you also need to take into consideration that Crypto Knight at level 60 has good defense stats as well. But that's a Denma attack, and it's Denma defense sucks. And that I've already said, but as it levels up, it gets okay. But that's only really when it levels up, at least. So now that Lodges is out of the way, we can take care of Antiosi. There's pretty much nothing he can do at this point since... Well, he can use Flap, but just another one of my monsters will get a turn, and then he will still deal damage one, one way or another. So it's just about time before he loses, and there's the killing hit. Oh, I watched the wrong HP bar. <laughs> Idiot. And if you're not familiar, Raika has bad defense. And Yoshi has bad defense and attack too, so... It's not the most dangerous opponent. 
So, we got rid of Boundary. And if you remember our enemy from part 9, Kipo Sophie, he is again the enemy here. And I'm getting tired of these freaking phone calls. No, they don't. So you spend a little time healing up. Pretty much all of your opponents here have sky, sky type monsters. As well as a lot of the monsters you will meet here have sky type as well. Well, not all of them, but there's a chance at meeting them, so... You have to be careful with that as well. This guy is probably the worst. Two Kyotis uh, as well as a Dipsagus. But other than that, the others really aren't that bad. He's just the worst one. So pretty much now you should just get used to me skipping just about every battle. Simply because there's nothing of value to show. Because the difficulty in this dungeon is that I just can't find my way around it. I always get lost, and some people might have a better idea of what they're doing. But because the dungeon is as long as tedious as it really is, I really didn't want to spend too much time in it, so... I pretty much just hit the wreck button and then tried my way through. Now I do the best that I can to avoid battles, but there's a lot of unskippable ones. Even monster battles as well, so... You might as well get used to that right away, but there's not that many of those. Now you don't need the treasure, but my OCD forbids me for not to not pick it up. And I will bring up the map a few times just to try to give off an idea of where I am and perhaps it will give you a better idea of what way to move. I know this is very sloppy but given the time I was doing this and recording it I really didn't want to do this twice or thrice. Or oh, whatever. Now I screwed up twice here, so I was forced to do that battle either way. But he has a Papawa, so... And I don't think he had any sky type monsters, but I don't want any... I'm not certain what any of these guys really has, but... Build your team around them having at least one sky type monster. That's the best advice that I can give you. So... If you want an, an advice when it comes to moving through this dungeon, you'll find the boss room by moving downstairs. However, some rooms just lead to a dead end, to a different spot. And some of them are necessary in order to get through, while some of them are not. And another unskippable battle. Yeah, these guys are idiots and very annoying. So at this point you're st I was stumped and didn't know what to do. But there's always that one path I didn't take. And, well more likely than, it, than not, it turns out to be the right way. This guy had a Dipsacus, so that's at least one sky type. Now Crypto but Kryptonite was almost dead at that point, so I had to heal up. Now this is the second part per se that I do of the dungeon. And I land straight in a guy. Surprise but six. <laughs> or so you could say. So, without a doubt, I can say that this is my most hated dungeon. My second most hated is actually the final dungeon. Because it's not that big of a maze. 
And it doesn't have some of the worst monsters you can run into. And for the sake of grinding, it's okay too. I don't know how much I will need. I hope I won't need it at all, but I might need it if I end up fight when I end up fighting Sanarpa again. So if memory memory serves me correctly, we're on the right floor. Okay, not yet. But the good thing about those guys is that you don't have to run into them if you don't want to. They all got treasure, and unless you really want it, there's no use use doing it. Now I ended up taking the wrong turn here a few times. And I did end up fighting him too. So then we enter the treasure room here. And get a bucket. Really. Now all we need is a guitar and we can start a band. Where our name is Buckethead. Oh wait, someone already did that, so we can't. There, whatever. Now, what you originally had to do is make a turn here. But of course, I didn't do that. Now I figured I hadn't shown any battles, so... For some reason I really wanted to. I don't know why, but... I just did, so get used to that. There won't be that many battles I will show, but... I guess I wanted to show you guys this because... Devsakis alone can't say be a time chewer. If, especially if he uses, uses fly like he did here. So my best suggestion is for your two monsters to charge up E-Magic. E and at Crypto Knight's level here he can barely do anything. Now believe it or not, but this Dipsakis doesn't have that great attack stat. You just happen to be very unlucky the first time you meet him that you don't have the best level and he's super effective against you. And your defense is not that great either. But I also make a sweet kill here, or so I think. Of course he decided to fly, so the my Devsakis was, for was forced to fail. But we can always try attacking. But it doesn't kill him. And that's kind of pathetic. He deals one damage more. Seriously. But Raigoden with a come from behind kill. That's always nice. So I move the wrong way here. And I don't even know why I keep this, but... Eh, it happens, it happens. So you go all the way down here. Or I did. Got more random encounters. Got noticed. Beat the shit out of another Dipsakis. Realized I had gone the wrong way. Or at least I should do now. Because those stairs m would lead upwards. Okay. I decided to keep this battle as well because it's short. And he's dead. So if you want to grind, that's the monster you want to hope for. And it shows up quite often outside, along with some other monsters, another monster that you're super effective against. You can also run into a monster that has the same type as you, but it, it has pretty good defense stat too. So, you want to be careful with that, but other than that, there's not that big a risk. And I'm not suicidal enough to go for that chest. Well, not that this would have been a dangerous battle, but there was no point to it. 
since there's only one more evolution I want to go for. So this is the right path, as I've pointed out already. The middle path. So there's much treasure to get, like a tap. What a waste. And believe it or not, it's just actually an evolution item. And we get a diamond. They're pretty useless at this point. Of course, it depends on how you play, I guess, but... I don't have any use for it. But we're now on the floor where we will find our final boss. Or are we? You know what, I'm just not going to say that anymore. <laughs> it seems like I have no clue what I'm doing, even though I'm all almost... I watched this a few moments ago. Well, make that ours, but whatever. For someone like Gadoruk, there's one thing you should know. Sky attack, sky attack, and sky attack. Nothing else. Because like I said, he's the same time type as Crypto Kryptonite. So, he should die rather easily. Now, I'm not sure how well his defense is. Whenever I'm using him, he's pathetic defensive-wise, but whenever I fight him, his defense seems to be higher than it really is. So I don't know about that. But this should be the final downstairs. And this looks more like the boss floor. Of course, I've said that many times now, without being certain. And I think this is going to cost me a lot if I'm wrong again. <laughs> okay. There's a few more battles to do, but neither are too difficult. The boss battle is very easy too, because you're only meant to do one thing. I will not spoil what it is, you'll have to see that for yourself. And I know some of you have tried, might have tried that before and wondered, is that supposed to happen? To which I can say, yes, it is meant to happen. So you move all around, get random encounters before changing screen, or a screen transition as you might say. Move all the way up here, now this is the spot we're at. The other way I believe will lead to a treasure room. But one of the diverting paths will be is actually necessary once we're done with the boss battle. But I'm not certain which way it is, and I will prepare that for the next day, next episode. You might notice our dear koala friend again. Well, he has changed around a little bit. Senarpa has given him new power, but we want to destroy him. And apparently has, he, has far, he has fought Boundary and absolutely utterly destroyed him. If you can do that, we should have no problem with this boss battle, right? Well, I will say nothing, just observe this for yourself. If you get this kind of luck at any other point in the game, just stop playing, seriously. <laughs> then there's absolutely nothing you can do. So... 
Well, we gave up. Pretty much. Oh, we are failed. Or am failed. It is the I person, but whatever. Uh, yeah. So they say a bunch of stuff that's not important, except for the fact that we have to find boundary. That's the only thing, really. I will do one thing, however, and that actually means leaving the dungeon. But I'll show you that. So, we decide to find Boundary to persuade him. That's it for this, take care, see you next time, peace out.